What's up, Turtle Riders, and welcome to the uh, Saturday Night Edition of Turtle Boy Live. Uh, with us tonight, as always, is our co-host, Brett Killer. And how you doing, Brett? Good, good. How about you? Good, thank you. And uh, joining us, uh, a special guest this week. Last time he was on the air, he passed out during the show. Hopefully, he lasts an entire show tonight. It's Matty Mo. How you doing, Matty? What up, what up? You alive tonight? You're going to make a whole show or what? I'll make the whole show. I'm kind of pissed off that I didn't make the show of the guy that we don't comment on anymore, but yes, he's we'll make the whole show, I can guarantee you that. Yes. All right, so before we go any further, so look it, I'm uh, broadcasting live tonight from the laundry room. I'm not even shitting you, all right? Uh, and before we do like roll call or anything, I'm like dead serious. Here's like a fucking washing machine, as you can see. And uh, by the way, oh, this um, episode tonight is sponsored. Uh, we actually have a sponsor tonight, so we got to give a shout out to them. So it's uh, Garage Doors Plus, located in Quincy, Massachusetts, has been in uh, business for over 18 years, serving the greater garage no door needs of Massachusetts, most of New England, the islands, and beyond. Garage Doors Plus has taken our extensive garage door installation and repair experience to all facets of residential, commercial, and industrial work in Massachusetts and around New England, offering same-day service in a full line of residential and commercial products. They provide the uh, highest quality product for any budget. Estimates are free, so there's never any stress when trying to find the right fit for your budget. Whether it's a huge multi-unit development or your grandfather's garage that's been around since you were little, call them up uh, and they can handle pretty much any garage door situation at 617-458-1148. That's 617-458-1148 or find them online at gdplus.com. So there we go. Uh, Garage Doors Plus in Hingham, uh, not Hingham, in Quincy, I apologize. Good people, if you people own a garage, head on down there. It's a great way to support Turtle Boy is to support the Turtle Boy advertisers. All right, so let's get this party started with a little roll call, shall we? Let's get the air plus. Yeah. All right, so how we like to start off every episode of Turtle Boy Live is a little thing we called Where You Reppin'. So let us know in the comments right now. Where are you repping from? Where are you watching Turtle Boy Live from right now? Oh, by the way, I hope you guys liked that opening there. That was, um, who the hell was that? That was the chick who was, uh, whatchamacallit? She was the chick who, uh, we did a blog on her earlier today. I think someone did. Uh, she was the one that like did an interview about the uh, cop getting shot. Uh, the two cops getting shot in Falmouth, and she came out there and was like, yo, my cousin, he good people. He's a really good guy. He just mad, misunderstood, and this is totally out of character for him. Yeah, she's a reporter, and she made that video. So obviously, I'm assuming South Shore Turtle Girl has a uh, follow-up in the comments. So let's see where people are repping from tonight. New York City. Oh, yeah, you got Ipswich. You 
You got Southbridge, Abington. Oh, Beverly, Falmouth. Beverly. Amesbury, everyone's here. North Grosnadale, Medford's in the house, Shirley's in the house, Eastford, Connecticut, Chapacha, Rhode Island. Never even heard of these places. It is S from Salem, and you got the halfway house. Oh, Sandwich, those. Chelsea, Lexington. Where else? Kansas City Turtle Riders in the house, Glendale, Arizona, Yay! Cape Cod. Trash was in the house. Oh, man, we got a big audience. We got a big audience tonight, people. Chapacha. Big audience. Oh, it is from Salem, and you got the Surely not in prison. You sure, buddy? Yeah. Should have a trap on there? Yeah. So we got a hell of a show tonight. Um, shout out, by the way, birthday shout out to Kimberly Lynn. It's Oh, yeah, we do birthday shout outs too. So if you're a turtle rider, it's your birthday. Feel free to let us know. It's Kimberly Lynn's birthday. Everybody wish Kimberly Lynn. She's a great commenter on the blog. Happy birthday, Kimberly Lynn. Brett's going to give you your birthday spankings later. Don't worry. On the house. Providence is in the house. Garden is in the house. Monroe, Connecticut's in the house. Man, we're everywhere tonight. Holy cow. New Braintree, as usual, is in the house. Apple, Where? Oh, Apple. Yeah. Athol's in the glory. house. Uh, what do we, I know we have some, we must have some Beverly people and some North Shore people in the house because they're on the agenda tonight. Or some. Is our Colleen friend here? Oh, he's Will here. Know whatever the fuck his name is. He's here. We got Lincoln, Rhode Island. Oh, Wareham. We even have Salisbury Beach. We even have Salisbury Beach, the ghetto beach on Massachusetts, besides Hampton on the New, on the New Hampshire side. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's easily Massachusetts' most ghetto beach. I agree. All right, so tons and tons of good shit tonight. Tons of good shit to talk about on the agenda. You got uh, Turtle Riders are ready. The hosts are ready. We're ready to rock. Yeah. Here, here's what the agenda looks like tonight. We got six things on the agenda, and a couple phone calls to make. Obviously, starting with I ninety three, what we call Poop Gate. The Gerber server, Gestapo, Henry Pills, Davies, uh, the Fall River, Dirty Dick Gladiator Returns, uh, and of course the Revive Dance Exchange, the big story of the week, ending with Ask Turtle Boy, anything you people want to know is fair game. As you guys can see, it's kind of like um, oh, Karina Shea says her garage door is always open. Isn't that cute? All right, so let's get this party started. <laughs> let's get this started. All right, so first uh, thing on the agenda was, where the hell is it at? Uh, the Not Revived Dance Exchange. Oh, Poopgate. We got to talk about this thing. So somebody sent us this in an email. Um, it was a picture on I-93 uh, South of what appears to be a woman uh, just defecating for unknown reasons uh, right next to her white Toyota Camry. It's next to a big billboard about workers' compensation. Maybe this was like some sort of political statement about unions. I don't know. Um, what do you guys think of this? Why, why was this woman taking a dump there? All right. So my first thought of this was, like a lot of people in the comment section, was like, you got to go, you got to go. At least jump the fucking railing, you nasty fuck bitch. That's true. Jump the railing. Just get down two feet. It was an embankment. You can go down, lift up your skirt, fucking squirt the Huxtables onto the fucking lawn and go on about your day. And then the rest... Oh, did I lose you guys? Did I lose Brett and Maddie? Hold on. We got to call him back. He was in the middle of a rant. That was good. Did we lose you? Fuck sake. Did we lose you? You there, Brett? Yeah, well, right. I don't know what happened. All right. That's you, not me. All right, so what happened there, right? Uh, you were talking about you You don't think this is a big deal. She could have just jumped over the embankment, correct? If, if she jumped over the embankment, it wouldn't have been a big deal. Right, exactly. Okay. You could, you could, you could squirt the Huxtables out. No one knows nothing. Get back in the car. You're good. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Instead, yeah. instead, she decided to put her back against the fucking guardrail. And every asshole going home could see her fucking mud curtain spitting the Browns into the Super Bowl. It makes no sense. <laughs> That's the first time the Browns ever made the Super Bowl right there. Uh, so the only time they ever will. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that was that was an interesting thing, and uh, I'm not sure what Maddie. Maddie, you have any thoughts on that or the usual? I I I think that that picture was a bit corny, and I think that she made a stop at the local Taco Bell, and that's kind of. What happened 20 minutes later? Okay, so here's the thing about this. So we found out who this car was registered to. And it's registered to some guy named Yurley Ventura. Yurley. And Yurley Ventura 
has some uh, girlfriend or wife named, I don't even remember her name, something Lopez, doesn't even matter what her name is. But we caught her at obviously her worst moment like ever. And uh, he gets all mad at us, right? And he like threatens to sue us. I guess these tweets aren't fucking coming out. What the hell is all this shit? Why isn't it loading? That's, yeah. Anyway, uh, we get a message back from this guy that he's basically, he's threatening to like um, go to the freaking cops about us or something like that. I don't even know what for. Uh, but he says he's going to, that this is some sort of, I don't know. Uh, oh, oh, he took down his Twitter. That's why it's not showing up. He took down his Twitter. So that's why it's all coming up fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why is it? Why is it coming up like this? Yeah, he took it down because he said he was going to the cops and he, he told us that um, it was some sort of invasion of privacy. I don't even know that we put his wife's name out there, but it's like, dude, your wife is dumping on the side of the road. Now, his excuse was the car was a rental. Do you guys believe that? No, not, not, a, not a chance. Why, why not? I believe that. Why not? How come, Matt? Is he, is he in the state? You know, there be a rental car operator? I guarantee you he's not. I guarantee you he's like the Spanish cab in Worcester. Spanish cab? Not, for those of us not familiar with Spanish cab, what is that? That's a number you call and you get kind of like a difference between yellow cab and an Uber. Okay. Gotcha. You pay a subsidized rate. Does, does Brett believe it? Does Brett believe that, that um, this guy's actually... No, not Okay, no. No, because he was saying, that's a car, yeah, it's in my name, but uh, I rent it out. Yeah. So it's not me or my disgusting street shit and wife that fucking drives it. Yeah. I rent it out to other people, which yeah. I remember from the thread, someone pointed out that there is services to where you can rent your own car out yeah. for shit. But, dude, and, and even if that's true, you're still responsible for that vehicle. Any crimes committed therein are, are your responsibility. It's true. That's a good point. Like, if you open defecated on a public roadway, dude, it, yeah. it doesn't get much. That's a gut of a mob. And by, and by the way, like, can we be honest that's here? At, at no point did we like attack this woman and be like, yo, this chick's evil. Go call her work. Some shit like that. It was just like, yo, here's a woman pooping on the side of the highway. That shit is hilarious, like no pun intended. Like, if you can't see the humor in that, what's wrong with you? It's a woman pooping on the side of the highway. I-93 of all places, in, in the middle of Boston, you know? So, if you the can't... Woman, the, woman, the woman in Busgate had more tact than that shit. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's like you were trying to get caught. Like, what are you doing? You, you could have hid behind the door, you know what I mean? You could have like gotten, and I'm sorry, like you said, if this is some type of ghetto Uber, it's still on you. Like if you're a Patriots season ticket holder, right? And you sell your tickets to somebody else and they... And then that guy goes and shits in the seats. Yeah. Guess what? You just got stripped of your season ticket. Exactly. That's how it freaking works. Like it's your freaking car, dude. Like what the hell's wrong with you? And, and honestly, I don't, ble I, I don't believe for a second that's not his wife. It's the same color hair, the same build. That's his freaking wife. But they have like, you know, they, they seem like nice enough people. Like they have kids and... They seem, you know, happy and shit, but what are you going to do? You're dumping on the side of the highway, you end up on Turtle Boy. That's just science, right? Yeah, that, that's just science. That's yeah. math, motherfucker. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. All right, so let's go on to our next topic, shall we? What, what's the, what, how many people do you guys see on here? Because my feed is stuck at 266. 258. Oh, wow. Right no. now, but it was at 270, son. Man, we're, we're fucking loading today. Hey, hey, uh, All right. One second, just real quick. Go ahead. Uh, if you... Awesome people can take a second and just hit that share button. Oh, so it yeah. It's up on your wall, and your friends that maybe don't ride the turtle as much as you motherfuckers do will see that you watch it, and they might go, hey, I ain't doing shit. Let me fucking click this right quick. And we get more people to ride the turtle, motherfucker. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so here's the deal. Let's go on to the next topic. Hey, that's nice. All right, <laughs> so uh, next up is the Gerber Server Gestapo. So we see this on some Facebook page called Hockamock Swamp Supper Club and Desserts Emporium. I don't even know what that means, but there's a Facebook group for it. And so here's what this girl, named after a freaking bag of chips, Emily Pringle, has to say. My family and I had dinner at Grill 88 in Halifax the other day. 
The food was great, and our waitress was excellent and very attentive. Then the hostess, Sandy, came over and told me to, quote-unquote, cover up. Because it was inappropriate that I was nursing my child in a restaurant. We kindly informed her that it was within my legal right to do so. We paid our check and left. I'm hoping others haven't had the same negative experience in the past and really hoping no one else is subjected to Sandy's ignorance in the future. Sorry to say that we will not be returning. All right, so what are you guys' thoughts on that right away? What do you, what do you guys think? A white girl no, voice. No, I can't, I, I can't get past white girl voice. Oh, wait, yeah, you gotta bust out the white girl voice, obviously. I hate, I hate nipple hippies. Hate them. Nipple hippies. Yeah. Patty thinks it's a nipple hippie. I'm still stuck on the white girl voice because that's one of my, besides freestyle, that's my favorite shit we do. Yeah. Is the white girl voice. White girl, well, we got all caps coming later, I'm sure. All right, so. Oh, I can't wait. What do you guys think of that? Um, I mean, we're all dudes here on the panel, so I'd like to hear from some chicks, too. But my my thoughts are uh, simple, okay? Marie LaRoche, or LaRoche, sorry if I said it wrong, oh, fucking well, uh, said she's lying. Really? How so? Lisa Marie LaRoche, how is she lying? Okay. Speak, bitch. All right, so here's my thoughts on this, right? When you go to, like, when women breastfeed, right? I mean, that's fine. I have no problem breastfeeding in public. But my wife and other people I've seen breastfeed, they all have this like cover up thing. I don't know. It's like a little drape. You don't even realize yeah. that there's a child sucking titty right in front of you. You don't like. You're like, oh it shit, there's a fucking. Unless it moves its head. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's like drapes being tits. Yeah, it's like unless it moves, and then you're shocked. You're like, oh, what the? Oh, all right, that's a kid. Yeah. No, I have no problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. My only problem with breastfeeding in public is they never wink back. Like, I'll, I'll go up to them and what's up? I got next. And they get all offended. <laughs> I got next. I got next. Guys, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I want to hear from some women. Honestly, it wouldn't bother me, says Erica, to see if they ask you nicely to cover up. Why cause a big stink? I don't have children yet, but be respectful to others, you know. Um, yeah, drapes for your tits. I mean, okay, so here's the deal. It's like, so number one, it, it, you should cover up. Right, whatever, because guess what? Like, yes, it is all natural, right? But we don't need to see, you know, the lactation express while we're eating dinner. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need to see a leaky nipple while I'm trying to eat filet mignon. No, thank you. All right. Um, and that's not unreasonable to ask. Like, you know what else, by the way, is a natural thing? Taking a shit. But as we saw in the last segment, there are certain places you should take shits in certain places, you shouldn't take shits. Now, here's the thing, right? The one thing she forgot to point out in here, the most important thing, what do you guys think that is? Uh, modesty. Uh, how about the age of the child? Oh, uh, what? Because she was breastfeeding a five-year-old? It was a fucking... Wait, it wasn't a five-year-old. It was almost a three-year-old. We'll just call him three because this is um, freaking... This was in October of 2017. This little pumpkin will be two a month from today. So that means he was born in November. And that would mean he's like like two and three quarters almost. Right? And so, so shouldn't that be incest? I don't know what it is. But all I know is this. That's too freaking old. That's that's beyond too old to, to breastfeed. And I, I knew this, this blog would bring out all the hippie women bullshit with this. And I'm going to tell you right now. No, I don't have breasts. I can't relate to this. This is mansplaining, but I don't care, all right? If your kid is three years old and you are breastfeeding him, you're a fucking lunatic. Something is seriously wrong with you. I don't care how many books you read about your kid getting autism from drinking 2% milk, okay? If you're breastfeeding your three-year-old, you are stupid. There's no other way around it, okay? You're definitely one of those uh, people that like, doesn't get their kids vaccinated, there's like a really good chance of that. There's a really good chance that you are just kind of like always the turd in the punch bowl. Like, don't you guys think that's a pretty important fact that she didn't point out? Don't you think, don't you think there's a problem with pulling out your, your baloney caps in the middle of a, a, of a BBC? I think there's a problem with that. Like nobody wants to see your baloney nipples. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, be, 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 be underneath the sheet and be done with it. Yeah. Like Naomi says, if the kid's old enough to ask for it, you're too old. 
You're too old. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like. Yeah. And like, like someone in the comments said, the, that little motherfucker already has teeth and can run away. Feed yeah. that motherfucker a hamburger and call it a day, you fucking sick bitch. Okay. That's <laughs> another good point, Brett. Right? Like when you're three years old. That's it. When you're three years old, you might still, okay, whatever. Like I see some people saying, yeah, I still do it. So I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. I was mansplaining it. Whatever. All right. Well, I did. I meant to hurt your feelings. If you feed your kid fucking Cheerios and cereal and you can't, you just give them the tip. You, you have a Yeah. Problem. Like there's a million ways around it. You can't put that, you can't pump. You can't put that shit in a cup, in a sippy cup. You have to take the 40 pound child out and like put him on the freaking table. Is feet are sticking off the end of the table? How the hell does that even work? Like, it, it sounds ridiculous. I wouldn't, mind, I wouldn't mind if she pumped, maybe put it on some ice cream, maybe fucking breast milk shake. That'd be fine. Breast milk this shake? Little motherfucker, <laughs> this little fucking asshole can eat chicken wings and you're still throwing his tit in your mouth. That's more about you than it is the kid. Yeah, that's a great point. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's a great point. Uh, because here's the you're thing. You're making it like, look, this is what I do. Yes. I don't care if my baby is 14 years old. He likes sucking my tits, so here we go. Yeah. Like, go fuck yourself, you little freak. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's the thing, too. Right? Like, obviously, if they're that old, they are eating whole foods. Like, it's been incorporated in their diet for a couple years now, right? So, like, yes, let's just say yeah. you do still drink breast milk. You can eat, you don't have to eat it in the restaurant. You can order a grilled cheese sandwich and then wash it down with some breast milk when you get home. Is that that hard to do? Dude, that sounds awesome. I'll, I'll sign up for that. Yeah. I mean, I don't... Does breast milk taste good? I don't know. So, anyway... I want to put it in my coffee tomorrow morning. Send me a pop, you fucking freak. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Breast milk is a great way to save on baby formula. That's the like that's the most useful, uh, you know, thing I've seen for it. But it's just like, come on. Come on. You got to get them off the tit after a while. All right. Yeah. Let's go on to the next topic. I'm not talking about Gerber servers because people got really fucking pissed about that. Uh, the next topic is Henry Pills. All right. This is my favorite segment of the week. Oh, boy. Fucking go. Oh, All right. So, oh, boy. I love this story. All right. So, we um, have this story here that um, this guy owns a freaking restaurant uh, in, his name is Robert Chiampi. He owns a restaurant in East Boston called Saratoga 300. All right. And here's the thing about him. At his, at his grand opening, right, he had, like, all these, dig, um, you know, dignified people there, uh, all these, like, uh, politicians, like uh, Senator Joseph Boncori. He's a Democrat who represents Winthrop. We have a guy from Marty Walsh's office um, down there. Like, there's people with microphones, like, professional cooks. Like, here's the freaking ribbon cutting. Like, it's like, oh, this is, like, legit. So you Google this guy, and you find out that in 2012... He went to jail for five years for freaking heroin dealing. He's a freaking heroin. But he wasn't like really a dealer. He was like their bitch boy. Uh, we call him Henry Pills because all he did was just deliver shit from point A to point B. He didn't make the phone calls. He didn't package it. He was just the fucking mob's shoeshine boy, essentially. And he got nabbed and he did five years in the can. And now he's out and he's opening restaurants. And for some reason, you have like state senators and Mayor Walsh's people down there like celebrating with him. It's like, what the fuck's wrong with you people? Is your Google machine broken? For, by the way, he's like a diehard Trump supporter too, which is kind of weird because those people are all fucking hardcore liberals. Like they're all active resistors. And here he is with fucking Trump. So Wait, that, that's hey, interesting. Go ahead. Hey. Go. Uh, that's the dude. Oh, no, no, no. It was his boyfriend that called Gupta the... Yes. And, we'll, yeah, go uh, take a sound clip. Of, he called Gupta Muignan. That was the boyfriend or him? That was the boyfriend. All right, all right, my fault. Sorry yeah, so we're going to get to him. Go ahead. So, um, we see he comes to our attention because he's in some Facebook group, right? And he decides to go on um, the Facebook page and he writes, they're talking about like crime in Dorchester or something. Somebody said, um, you know, there's Dorchester neighborhoods, people are killing themselves. And this guy comes out and he goes, Sometimes I just wish we had the KKK in Massachusetts. I shit you not. They just kind of, I wish we had the KKK to straighten these M's out. Now, what do you guys think? So, we thought it said monkeys, but people are saying it's motherfuckers. What do you guys think? Is that motherfuckers or monkeys? 
I, I, I think just because of the amount of the asterisks, it was motherfuckers. Yeah. I don't think he said monkeys. But you said, I wish we had the KKK around for these motherfuckers. Yeah. You could have said, I wish we had the KKK around for these mother lovers or you know, wallflowers. Or, you know, like, it, it doesn't matter. Your first sentence was i wish we had the, the KKK, kkk around and like who that is that by itself makes you a racist piece of shit yeah who and is like, considering how much cock he took in prison that's kind of confusing yes <laughs> it's true too right and so it's like he actually goes on and he keeps talking and he goes Maybe you feel as though every ter- every white man with a gun is a terrorist against blacks, too. Oh, I got to do it in the all-cast voice because this is like a run-on. Maybe you feel as though every white man with a gun is a terrorist against blacks, too. Well, it's not true. Now, it's merely saying that it's times like these where somebody would be around to straighten them out with their wise mouths. Somebody has to stand up, and it sure isn't going to be me. So you can take your bullshit and shove it up your dirty shit terrible that you don't even stand up to your own kind, you get to be ashamed of yourself. So, quick recap of what he's attempting to say there in broken English. What he's trying to say is that um, as white people, we all need to stand up for each other against them. And I think we can all assume that by them, that you wish somebody would straighten them out. I th- Who do you think is talking about them, Brett and Maddie? I think he's talking about, listen, so I think he was sober enough at that point in time to add the extra asterisk, so it looked like he wasn't saying anything racist. But but who's them? Who's them? Them, I think, so he put motherfuckers. Wrong answer. Who's them? Who's them? This is is me throwing you a layup. I'm throwing a ball in the air, and then you dunk it. Who's them? Monkeys. No, good God. Okay. Brett, can we can you help him out with this one? I think he was referring to black people. Yes, he's referring to black people. Yes, the answer is black people. African Americans. Yes, the answer is black people. Okay, when he's saying he wishes they were around to straighten them out with their wise mouths, he is talking about black people clearly. Okay, and that we need to stand up. Okay, and um, you know, with stand up for our own kind. So because this guy's white. I have to back him up because I'm also white. That's basically what he's saying here. All right. And of all the fucking people, we need a fucking clan who's only pretty much associated with burning crosses and hanging black folk. We need them back around. You can, It's literally one of the most racist. Like, some people kind of hide their racism. This motherfucker just comes out and says it. Like, yo, we need the fucking clan, motherfucker. I mean, look at him. Yeah, he, I, oh, he, wait, 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 wait. Shoot, shoot, shoot. So. Why is the problem, though, like, in all the comments on the blogs and on his shit and stuff, they're like, wait, wait, he's not racist. He didn't say monkeys. It's like, wait, so so you're hung up on the asterisks. Yeah. Like, you're hung up on what word he said after he said, we need the Ku Klux Klan back. Yeah. That right there is racist as fuck. No, that's what I'm saying. Yes. There's no talking your way out of that one. Right? Like, we need to... Right, let's call this motherfucker. Yeah. So, anyway... Yeah, exactly. We shouldn't even be... I thought it was monkey... I thought he meant monkeys simply because it was only one word. Like, motherfuckers is two words. And so, I don't know. But whatever. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Still doesn't explain the clan shit. So, this... Yeah, mo- that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. So, this motherfucker who dresses like a freaking stick of juicy fruit down at the... Uh, uh, or whatever that is, freaking double mint gum down at Mohegan Sun. He looks fucking ridiculous. This guy is like every cliche of a wannabe f- Sopranos reject, like ever. Like everything he talks about is like, yo, I'm making fucking meatballs in the kitchen. You know, come on down, listen to Dean Martin and fucking Frank Sinatra. It's like, dude, shut the fuck up. Nobody likes Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra. You're trying way too hard to be like a good fella. You're like fucking 56. Like, you weren't born, you weren't alive there in the 40s. Stop it. You're a fucking washed up dude who, like, was never around for the fucking good old days. You're from fucking East Boston. You live underneath the fucking Logan Airport. Shut the fuck up. You're not a fucking gangster, okay? You went to jail for five years because you're the mob's bitch boy who got caught delivering heroin from point A to point B. That's it. 
All right. So anyway, you see on his restaurants, like nothing but bad reviews. Like the guy's like a womanizer, all this shit. So I think um, it's time because by the way, he was supposed to come on. This is what he told us tonight, right? That he was going to come on the show and, um, but this motherfucker shows up, Danny Dion. Let's just call them both up. We don't even need to get into this. Everybody knows who they are by now. We're calling them up. Let's call them up. Yeah, can we? Yeah. Oh, what do you think? All right. And then we're calling that fucking little micro dick fucking hood rat Danny. Yeah. Oh, we're calling them both. They won't answer because yeah, yeah. they're gutless. I think you should call that little cunt Danny first. Well, no. Now, see, the thing, my problem with Danny was he kept posting the... the Turtle Boy Sports. Fucking, yeah, Turtle... Turtle Boy Sports. Yeah, real official right. source. So you're saying we're full of shit. The people that fucking took down Mosaic, the people that called for change in the state police, fucking all this great shit we, we view, whatever the fuck, have done. You go to Turtle Boy Sports yeah. for your information. Yep. Yeah. Named after a fucking oh cut. My. You get your information from a website named after Cutlery. And so here's the thing with Robert Ciampi. He said he was going to come on. He was like begging, like, oh, I'm totally not a racist. And his thing about his excuse for not being racist, by the way, was the best I've ever heard in my life. Was that I asked for a black cellmate, which is the most fucking fantastic I am not racist but I've ever heard in my entire life. Who was his first cellmate? I, I don't know. A freaking Puerto Rican? You no, must not like them. Danny kid. Oh, his butt buddy. By the way, we found yeah. D- Danny. And so, so when his asshole got too stretched for Danny to be able to hit that spot, he's like, you know what? I need one of these Mandingo motherfuckers. I'm going to ask for a black cellmate. You got to go. Yeah. He's probably traded for a sweetie doe in a fucking Newport. Mm-hmm. You cock-loving fucking half-wigger fucking cunts. Yeah, let's call him up. Let's call him Danny. Fuck you. Let's call D- so this is the guy who was like defending him. Uh, he was from jail. And by the way, we found out about Danny Dion. We know about you, buddy. We've seen your prison discipline records, and we got a blog coming about that. You know what this guy got in trouble for? He's such a badass. Guess what he got caught with in prison? And he went to the hole for 24 hours. A dildo? A fucking pepper. He got caught fucking contraband fucking vegetables. Like, I'm not even kidding. Fucking... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? He's in fucking produce. Like that, he stole a fuck. What a I fucking. I know where he hit it. I, oh, he, he was shoving it up Robert's fucking Henry Pills. <laughs> All right, so let's call this boy up. Let's see what he's got to say. Angelo. See if he answers. No, oh, no, he won't. He's too bitch, man. Yeah, he's a pussy. Dude, too. Yeah. There's a guy that I, I went back and forth with on one of the blogs, this fisherman dude. He literally looks like the old man in the sea. Great dude. And he told homeboy, he's like, look, here's where I am. Come on, let's go. And and this little fucking half a fruit fly goes, yeah, I'll be there in five minutes. Dude took a video 20 minutes later. He's like, you know where to be found. He goes, I'm not going near an ambulance company that I owe a thousand dollars to. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at this motherfucker. What a pussy. What a bunch of fucking puss. And this is why these guys aren't hired. They're fucking scared of Turtle Boy. They're scared of Turtle Boy. These like gangsters like, oh, I'm so bad. And what did this guy go to jail for? Danny Dion? It was something so stupid. He, I think he went, oh, there he is. There's his like probation department thing. He went to jail for, where'd he go? Oh, he stole a credit card, right? And then he went shopping at McDonald's. Did a dollar seven, and the judge actually said, "quote unquote, you gotta love the dollar menu." Like, boom, you got roasted by the fucking judge. Congratulations! And then he goes on and he buys like absolutely hoodtacular stuff, a PlayStation, like all the shit. And by the way, Danny, you're not from Salem. Stop saying you're from Salem. You're from Hamilton. Get it right, as in Hamilton Wenham. Have you guys been to Hamilton before, Brett? Yeah, yeah, like. I've never, ever... Nothing said gangster like Hamilton. I've never seen <laughs> Hamilton in the news. I've never seen Hamilton on Turtle Boy. I've never heard of a ratchet from Hamilton. Not Until now. Until now. All right. You are not... There's a reason he says he's from Salem. is because he wants to try to act hard. But ultimately, you're just a little bitch from fucking Hamilton who smuggles... 
peppers into his jail cell and then gets caught before eating the peppers. That's how much of a bitch you are, dude. All right. And I'm sure he's listening right now. And just understand, everybody's laughing at you. And you can share Turtle Boy Sporks all you want and say, oh, I know Turtle Boy. Nobody gives a fuck, dude. Nobody cares. You're a fucking loser. And you're always going to be a loser. And you're always going to be our bitch. Just, just understand it. And your buddy Robert, nobody, nobody's scared of him. Like he keeps talking about, oh, by the way, Robert, this is what Robert told us. He told us he was going to uh, come on tonight. And then he canceled, right? Because, oh, you guys are fucking crossed too many lines. The guy who wants the clan to come back thinks he's above Turtle Boy. Now, I mean, that's fantastic. And according to him, uh, he was going to have like 20 guys at the bar uh, to come on live with us. He like, was going to call the bar because it would be full of Muslims, Puerto Ricans, Mexicans. Yeah, all these people. <laughs> By the way, there, there ain't none of that at his bar. It's all fucking crusty old white people. I'll guarantee you that. Yeah, for people coalition at the bar. You know, right? Yeah. The Reverend... Hey, just so you know, the last time that I heard Hamilton in the news was when they were playing on Broadway. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Where the fuck is Hamilton? Hamilton is like on the way to Ipswich. It's like near the Topsfield Fair and like... Uh, Beverly, I think it's north of Beverly, I want to say. Uh, so, yeah, it's like literally everything past Beverly and um, like Danvers on the North Shore is really fucking nice. And that's what, until you get to Salisbury. And uh, that's why we don't ever write about it. So, there you go. All right. Yeah, he's got yeah. union delegates. And that's the reason why I, I, think, I think Hamilton is, is, is short for just a tip. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Let's go on to our next topic, shall we? Cause this guy, Let's I mean, should, can we call him one more time? We gotta call Robert one yeah, more. Yeah, one more time. Oh, he. Let's, oh, let's so call him, let's call my buddy Cianci's cousin. Oh, actually. Uh, so Danny says, "I got you, Turtle Boy. See you soon." That's what he says. See you soon. Oh, oh we're so scared. Bring your peppers You're with you. See this dick, Danny. You yeah. See this dick. Yeah. Well, that's what he wants. Bring your peppers. Bring your peppers. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> yeah. Muy caliente, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Since those two are too chicken shit to come on the show, we will go on to our next, uh, next. T- topic, and that is uh, the uh, babies. We got to talk about this. this is, people are losing their oh, freaking minds. Oh, So every day society gets a little bit guys, more so fucked up. And it's just like... Nobody ever says stop. It's always just like, yo, yeah, this is everything that's fucking weird should be embraced. And if you don't fucking embrace it, well, you're a bigot and you're a Nazi and a white supremacist and blah, 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 blah. And that's why I kind of embrace being called. If you're not being called a Nazi white supremacist these days, you're doing something wrong. Like reevaluate what you're doing. Like I get called a Nazi and a white supremacist so much that it means nothing now. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. Because all that means is you're standing up for things that are true and normal. Like, for instance, if you have a penis, you are a boy. I know, that's fucking crazy. To, like, really bigoted to think. But, you know, here's the thing about transgender, right? If you want to do that when you're older, if you're like an 18-year-old and you're like, you know what? If you're a fucking Bruce Jenner and you're like, I want to be a chick, then throw it on. Do, I mean, this is America. Do whatever the fuck you want to do. I don't give a shit. But my problem is when you do it to kids because my kid thinks he's a freaking astronaut and the other one thinks she's freaking Katy Perry and like they're not though. They think they are, but they're not. And if I was like a, you know, really woke parent, what I would say to them is like, yes, you are in fact an astronaut. Here's freaking tickets to space camp with NASA. You're going to be a fucking astronaut, but I'm not. Right? Because I'm not a liar to my kids. And do you guys see this family out of Skituit? Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys... So basically, this flyer has been going around in the mail, right? To vote yes on three, something about transgender issues in, in, in November. I will be voting no, simply out of spite. Um, but as you can see here, they're like, our four and a half year old transgender daughter only recently socially transitioned to living as her authentic self this past spring. As my husband and I became more educated about raising a transgender child, we were hugely relieved to know Massachusetts is one of the states with laws in place to protect our daughter's ability to live her life privately, free of discrimination. 
We're just as quickly horrified to learn of the ballot initiative coming up in November that would rip those protections away from her. Well, blah, blah, blah. Right. So this is a four-year-old son. This is the family, all right? And this child right here, I don't normally put pictures of children on blogs or allow them to be on here, but they're the ones insisting on putting their kid in the spotlight. So here we are. And as you can see there, this is a boy. It's a very pleasant looking boy too. And what do you got? Just look at the dad. What do you guys think of the dad? Uh, he's a cuck. That is the dictionary definition of cuck. Yes, that absolutely. Like that's the kind of guy who takes his wife's uh, last name. You know, and the kids. He's, have, a, he's, he's a fey dad. He's a fey dad. Exactly. Dude, I guarantee he pulls her tampon out, wipes her, and inserts the new one. Oh. <laughs> You got that right. And so, this kid is clearly a boy. Awesome. And now, he's four and a half years old, and he's a girl. And so, like, if you have a four and a half year old boy that wanted to put on dresses, what would you guys say? Because you guys have kids. What would you I, say? I would say he's still breastfeeding. Yes. Well, what would you say, though, seriously? Oh, well, I, would, I would have a huge problem with that. Like, you put on dresses, like... You know what? I'll be honest. I came from a single parent household. I had two sisters growing up. So I, I heard all about the Barbies and new kids on the block. I heard about all that shit. But you know what? My mother never forced Barbies, new kids on the block, like none of that shit on me because that's not what parents do. But nowadays with the with this, what we got going on with the Fabies and the, hey, be in if you want to be gender X on your license. Fuck out of here with that shit. Like, dude, like, let your kid decide what they're going to be without any adult influence on them. Yeah. And so, yeah, so All people right. are saying, like, yeah, so just... now you want my opinion? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. All right. So now, if... I, I honestly believe this transgender. Like, not the Caitlyn Jenner type shit. Like, just some wires get crossed, genetics get confused, and there's a girl that, like, was supposed to be a dude. You know what I mean? Yes. Like that transgender thing, I think is real. Okay. Like the okay. not that the dysmorphia shit, but like you you were just born in the wrong body. It happens. Okay. But to force this shit on a child, a four year old doesn't know the difference between fucking power blocks and fucking Legos. Doesn't know a, <laughs> doesn't know a dick from a doorknob. As far as, say, an Autobot or an action robot. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You can't even decide what color to use to color outside the lines, you little retard. It's so, there is no way sexuality has even passed your brain. Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, I totally There's no you. fucking way. Yes. And I, and I agree a thousand so percent now, with that. So now, now, say that kid's 14 and he's listening to Shake It Off. Yeah. And fucking putting on eyeliner. Well, maybe your kid's gay. And that's fine. Who gives a fuck? I don't care what you lick, stick, suck, but I don't give a shit about that. As long as you raise a happy, well-adjusted kid, that's yeah. what matters. Yeah. Maybe your 14-year-old wants a dick in his mouth instead of a pussy. Whatever. But at 10 years before, a decade before that, a 4-year-old has no idea what a dick or a pussy is. True. So leave him the fuck alone. Yes, Let I him agree. be a fucking kid. Because, bro, I've seen a couple people on here say, like, my kid wants to dress, wear his older sister's dress sometimes, fucking around, whatever. That's fine. But fine. you just let them do whatever they want. But what you don't do is say, well, this is my daughter now, and you have to call her that. You have to call her she. Or they, or they, or whatever fucked up pronoun yeah, you came up with. That's the only I'm good thing that. Listen, there's one good thing that can happen from this. What? People stop doing that stupid gender reveal, to where they blow up balloons that are pink or blue, and all oh, fucking have all their little gay hillbilly friends whip flowers in the air or some dumb shit. I don't care what your kid is. Yeah. Like you said, don't don't friend this profile because I don't care what you had for lunch and I don't care if your kid did what every other kid does. Yeah. But don't post your two year old because they grabbed a pink flower, all of a sudden that little boy 
who has a penis is all of a sudden a woman of the year, Caitlyn Jenner recipient. Well, how about this, Brett? How about this? Let these little motherfuckers grow up, man. Dude, Brett, look at this picture, right? That's on the on the on the screen now. It's from the Connecticut Track and Field High School <laughs> State <laughs> Championship. It's a fucking oh, boy. One. It's a fucking guy that won. He, did, he didn't just win. <laughs> he didn't just win. He like smashed state records, and like we're just supposed to fucking embrace this. This is fucking madness. Like my little, my we daughter. Went through this. No, wait, wait. We went through this. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, when that story came up. Yeah. To where now there was some girl from some town that worked her fucking ass off All to of get them. that record. Yeah. She was better than every fucking one. Yes. And you took it from her because you were born with a cock and ball. Yes. Fuck you. Yeah, exactly. And I'm supposed to embrace this shit. Like, no, I don't embrace this, okay? I think this is fucking terrible. I think it's wrong to do to girls, especially. It, it seems to help boys, but it doesn't seem to fucking help girls. All right. And then, first of all, how do we know who's real and who's not? Right? Like, anybody, the rule with being transgender now is all you have to do is just be like, yo, I feel like a girl. And that's it. Like, there's no safeguard. Uh. There's no fucking paperwork. There's no, like, test. I don't know. Fucking blood work. Fucking something. Everything else in the world requires a fucking piece of paper and a fucking form. Maybe pull their pants down. If you have a dick, you're in this group. If you have a cunt, you're in that group. Yeah, there you go. Not that hard. That doesn't make sense. No, it makes perfect sense. Instead of co- instead of boys and boys and girls groups, just play cocks and pussies. All right, you know it's like the p- the pussy one hundred meter dash is up next, followed by the if cock one hundred meter dash. Tip, I run against this guy. Yeah. If I have a labia and a clit, I run against these. Bitches. That's not that hard to understand. You know what I mean? That ain't that. Hard. Yeah. Makes no fucking sense. Yeah, and so here's the thing. They're- this, these, you got these people. You got the. Here, here, I'll go on my psychotic out of your shit. Your weapon actually kids to your advantage to further, and that is fucking beyond wrong. Beyond wrong. Yes, totally. Are we still live? It says video interrupted. Hold on. Yeah, no, it's 111. Okay, we're good. Okay, all right, just making sure. All right, so I'm sorry, all right, so here's my thing. For a here's my thing um, with this. These p- new people have taken it to another level. There's a thing now that these parents in Cambridge started called babies. I swear to God, they are raising their kids without a gender. They don't even tell them you are a boy or a girl. Like when people ask about them, like people ask like what gender is your kid, they're like I don't know. They haven't told us yet. Like, if they fucking, like, announcement that the kids are going to make, like, freaking signing day for high school kids. Like, what fucking college are you going to go to? What gender is it going to be? They don't, they're not even telling people if it's a boy or a girl. These, these people should be thrown in the loony bin. They're fucking crazy. And I'm sick of, like, having to pretend like this shit is normal. It's not. All right? Wait, and I, go what ahead. What do they say? They're like, hey, what team did you commit to? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy this season, so uh, I'm going to go off for a football team. Yeah. But next week, it's, well, actually, I, I feel, sometimes I feel like I got nuts. Sometimes I don't. Yeah. So this week, this week I'm running in women's field and track. Yeah. No, you don't get to do that. Yeah. Unbelievable. At some point, it becomes a psychopathy. Yeah. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, at one point, it's like, dude, maybe you're confused, and I get it, and if that's your thing, eh, let's figure it out and and take the path you want, and that's fine. We live in a society with Caitlyn Jenner, oh, I'm sorry, Bruce fucking Jenner. Yes, it's Bruce. One woman of the year. Yes. For bravery. That's insane. Absolutely insane. All right. So, by the way. It, to me, I wouldn't, like, it seems like they're, like, getting credit for being a chick without doing the hard shit that comes along with being a chick. Like, you know, fucking bleeding once a month and being pregnant. To me, that seems like you're fucking cutting the line. No? You guys still there? We lose you? No. You there? All right, hopefully you guys are coming in. Let's go on to the next topic. 
Next topic up for discussion, the Fall River Dirty Dick Gladiators. Brett, are you still there? Hello? Hello? Let's look at all these fucking things. Jesus Christ. Yes. Okay. From Ratchet Madness. She made the final four, if you recall. And there she is. Uh, she made the final four because she went driving around, right, looking for some other ratchet to fight to see who was the fucking most skanktacular whore in Fall River. This is a video of it. Bitch. You know where I'm at, you drive by my house every day and stalk me. Get out live, boo. Still got, get out live, boo. She actually went around. Boo. You wanna come stalk me? You just was driving by all slow. You stalking ass bitch, so worried about me and my pussy. Stalking ass bitch, so worried about me and my pussy. Well, she found her, and there was a three part fight series. Let's check out some of these. Where we go? What did I say, Amber? Come on, Amber. Go, think about this video. Come on, Alice. It's not working. Let's try this video. How about this one? Is this working? I'm going to try. I'm going to restart that one. All right. So, anyway, Tiona Addington. Come on. Come on. We're going to get out of this one for a minute. Watch out. Try to watch it over here in Chrome. See if it works any better. Is, is uh, Brett still here? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. We didn't lose it. That's good. All right. So anyway, there. let's see if the videos work in Chrome because it was all fucked up over there. Come on. Come on, Fupa computer. We're going to get it. I'm still stuck on the babies. You're still stuck on the babies? No, dude, that gets me so fucking mad. I know, I know. It's just so fucking hilarious. Anyway, we'll see if we can come back to the videos. Come on, these wait, fucking wait, ads. Wait, wait, wait. All right, so wait a second. Shoot. 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 What year? What, what year did you have your first kid? Uh, 2013. All right. Now, back then, if you'd have looked at those those nurses and doctors and said, hey, don't list it as a boy or a girl, list it as a they. They would have looked at me and be like, yo, they probably would have called DCF, be like, this dude's fucking high. Dude, they would have called DCF and put you on a fucking 90 day observation at Worcester State, son. Yo, yeah. I they would have looked at you like you a bad shit crazy. Oh yeah, cheer go. Get her. Whoa. Let it go, dog. Let it go. Now, the best part was what these chicks were fighting over. They were fighting over some dirty dick named Matthew Bird, who apparently had impregnated both of them in the past, uh, as both their baby daddies. And he was currently incarcerated. So they were fighting over the right of who... Um, was going to be the recipient of his spam javelin upon release from incarceration. I shit you not. Like, only in Fall River does shit like that happen. And she wrote some of the most rash tackle things. You guys want me to do an all caps voice for this shit? I feel like we have to, right? Of course we do. Okay. Is that a stupid question? All right. So here's a small sample of something she wrote. So apparently before I put my baby picture on Facebook, bitches was paid for people to get it for them and send to them. LOL. I just seen the proof, but you're not worried about me. Why you so obsessed with me and my son? LOL. Don't lie. I have proof. No, I would have sent what you want if you asked. Send you one of me. My son, you could have asked so you could have saved your shit. LOL. Let me stop. I don't feed into your dumb shit no more. I think it's hilarious. Bitches going to say that a lie. I got proof. LOL. Don't worry, boo boo. He Matt LMFAO going on with my day now not proof uh, feed into no more as you see I just thought it was funny we are that important to you MRB Jr. is hashtag daddy twin now that all folks I don't feed into this dumb bitch no more as you see so obviously as you can ascertain from that 
This was a very serious issue that could only be resolved uh, by writing run-on sentences on Facebook, stalking each other in the streets, and uh, fighting, okay? Obviously, that's what it had to be. And this is the kind of shit she shares on Facebook. I'll have my baby, my car tomorrow, did all by myself. That's what you call independent woman without a N-word. And this is, she writes, this, oh is, this is a meme she shares, the meme. It says, whose pussy is this? Her, my baby daddy's. And her comment on this picture is, I tell him that all the time, only him till the end. Like, I bet you fucking do. I bet you do. So, How any, many profile pictures does she have with cornrows? Of who? This chick. Who's cornrows? With the pencil they- I don't get it. I think he means the hairstyle. The hairstyle. Oh, there. I don't, I'm not sure. We'll get to that in a minute. Let's see what she's up to here. So she goes, this bitch say I'm ugly, she cute, blah, blah, blah. We could go on about her fucking rants. So anyway, she was back in the news. Uh, it's been about a year. She made uh, the final four of Ratchet Madness before losing to Didi Delgado. And here she is. Uh, she has been arrested for, take a wild guess, guys. Uh-uh. Uh, what was it? Sucking dicks behind Pennywise? Yeah, I'll tell you what it wasn't. She wasn't fucking protesting at an abortion clinic. She, of course, was doing uh, what she always does, uh, offering to suck your dick for $30 uh, to an undercover police officer. By the way, 30 bucks. I mean, that's classic Fall River right there. I mean, only in Fall River can you get a... Wait, blo- Go ahead. But just the BJ? I don't know. I assume you let it... T- I assume you could do it. It's too much. I mean, would you want anything but a BJ from her, Brett? No, 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 no. I, I wouldn't want shit from her. Good God! But as far as price gouging goes, she's price gouging. She's price gouging on a junkie blowjob. That's a twenty dollar joint. That's true. <laughs> she she added ten to it. I mean, Brett, can we talk about her forehead? Like you could land a jumbo her jet on that thing. It, lo- it looks like freaking Worcester Airport, the top of her head. Jesus her forehead, Christ. Her forehead looks like a Dodge Intrepid windshield. Like a Dodge Intrepid windshield. Let's go on. So she's back. She's back on Facebook. And she's writing ridiculous things. All right. Um, let me do another one of her. LMFAO, the shit I see on Facebook, that should be cracking me up. Like I'll be sitting back laughing how people that hated somebody all the time, now they're best friends. Yo, y'all bitches in N words, Fall River Street. Fake. That's why I don't fuck with nobody, but literally two or three people. I'm telling you, I had to sit back and laugh when I seen that shit. But you guys can go on with yourselves and act fake because you guys want some of that money because somebody's making some money or want to use somebody. I'm just laughing my fucking ass off, like really, because about a year ago, nobody likes someone people now because they are best friends. I'm going to sit back and laugh my motherfucking ass off. I've been doing this since I seen a comedy on Facebook. Everybody acts like mommy, daddy, and grandma of the year all of a sudden, and aunties and some more shit. Go on with your bad self, fake as foe. So she's back. She's back. Uh, and oh, she, hey. Yeah, she's more ratchet than ever. I could read these all freaking day. Um, uh, as you can imagine. Oh, I loved her. Um, th- uh, did you guys see her birthday? What she got for her birthday? <laughs> <laughs> a pack of Newport Lights, a bunch of scratch tickets, and $50, and a pack of freaking Starburst. Like, <laughs> that is the uh, greatest. Now, wait, 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 wait. Shoot. If you're excited enough to post <laughs> this birthday extravaganza yeah. on Facebook, because you got some scratch tickets, new ports, a dollar store stuffed animal, yeah. you really need to think about washing your mouth out with buckshot. Yeah. <laughs> Start making your parents cry themselves to sleep. Yeah. That's a hot. Somebody's like, yeah, that's a hard thirty-five right there. That's a hard thirty-five. Dude, so, so let's call her. Sixty-eight. We're calling her up. I mean, dude, yeah! she's thirty-five, but she's sixty-eight in Fall River years. Let's be honest. True. I think she left a decade off her age. She's, yeah. She's sixty-eight in heroin years. Oh come on, Tia. Twenty-two in dog years. Yeah. <laughs> so she's not answering. She's probably out working the streets right now. She's very busy. And this is what she writes like a day. By the way, oh, here's the thing. Here's the best part. She's pregnant again. She's fucking pregnant. Mother of best kids with one on the way. Did you guys see how many kids she has? Eight. 
What is it? With the pencil yeah. to the Eight. She has eight kids in custody of none of them. No, no, no. Maddie was right. Maddie was right. He, guessed, he said eight. Eight. Eight is the lucky number. And this is the oldest. My firstborn son, Damien. Keep in mind, she's 35 in real life. Damien looks like he's freaking 22, uh, which would explain a lot, as you can see. Obviously, he turned out fine. Um, and, and, and a real creepy fucking twist to this. The picture of her and her oldest son, they look like they're fucking. Like, you know, I know. I, I thought they were too. a relationship yeah. in a relationship with most pictures. Like, you know what I'm talking about? Brett, I thought the same thing. I'm like, this is her fucking guy. This is the new guy who's banging her. Oh, no, it's his son. It's her fucking son. This is what she actually wrote on her Facebook page on July 12th. This is just a couple days before she was arrested for prostitution. Suck his dick until he stops breathing, then perform CPR and look him in the eyes and whisper, oh, I missed the best part, and whisper, I ain't a killer, but don't push me. Like, she's not kidding. That's the, like, she shared that meme as like freaking life coaching advice. You know what I mean? And then this is what she writes two days after the rest. Stop spending the night with people you can't spend the day with. Don't be a whatever. Okay? Like literally a hooker who gets paid to spend the night. Well, not the night. A couple minutes in the night with uh, guys she doesn't know uh, is, is is urging people not to do that. So, that that's fantastic. Any thoughts about Tiona? Alright, wait, wait. Go ahead. Wait, wait. So my thing is say you're that pathetic loser that has the pay for a blow. Yeah. You pull your car up to the stroll, and all of a sudden that fucking six headed mutant pulls her face into your fucking passenger window. Yes. What do you do? You there, Brett? And it goes, listen, I'm right. And that fucking, fucking goes down towards your penis? If you don't punch her in the face and run, you ain't a man. It's so true. You are not a man. Yeah. People are saying, can we call her up? We tried calling her up. I mean, we can't. She won't answer. She's working right now. But I agree with you, Brett. Like, how could anybody ever let anything like that near their special guy? It's a reptile, son. Yeah, like, come on. Like, have some pride. Like, I would much, much, much rather beat off than allow her anywhere, anywhere down there. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Like, Jesus Christ. That sounds terrible. That sounds absolutely terrible. So, anyway. If you let Jabba Jaws there go down towards your fucking unit, you deserve what you get. And you paid for it. He's gonna spit on it and yeah. give you AIDS. Yeah, exactly. Good God. AIDS. Good fucking God. Good God. I understand if you're horny, you haven't got some in a while. Like, go to a freaking rub and tug. Go, don't go to the freaking the chicken middle of Fall River. Like, what are you thinking? Go to freaking Amsterdam. I don't know. Something. All right. So let's talk about our last topic of discussion here tonight. And that is the revived dance exchange story that we did this week. So we don't have time to revisit all seven parts of the story. This was supposed to be a five- Part story. If you have not followed this story, let me give you a brief rundown of what we discovered about this woman. So Revive Dance Exchange in Beverly is owned by a woman named um, Candy Dennis. And she's a little heavy set woman with a husband who uh, took her maiden name, mind you, named Ben. And they came to our attention because they have been doing some shady things at this dance company that they own. Uh, they do have two daughters there. We tried to protect their identities as much as we could, but the mom says the daughter's name so much, it's like impossible not to. So mom starts a GoFundMe, right? That really kind of like got her parents to be like, what the fuck's going on? For some disease called cerebellum something, like something. She tried to make, like pick a really rare disease that no one would know about and assume no one would do research. And she's like acting like she's dying. She's constantly posting like, I went to the doctor's office and he told me that I'm like a couple days, like he's never seen anything this bad and life is not fair. Like a doctor told her life is not fair in front of other patients. And then an old guy started crying. Now give me money. 
Like it's so unbelievable, it's not even funny. Uh, and they raised like over a thousand dollars, so it's really not that much that she raised. But it's what she was doing in the meantime. She was going on exotic trips, right, to like freaking Disney World, right? Where are they at? Oh yeah, there they are. Uh, here they are at uh, Discovery Cove, which by the way costs five hundred dollars to go to. Five hundred dollars a person to go Dude, to Discovery we Cove. Had, we had another fucking broad, one of the GoFundMe blogs. It was like kissing dolphins and shit at Disney, going, oh, I can't, I can't afford to get food, but uh, here's pictures of me kissing dolphins. Yes. It's like, wait, what the fuck? Yeah. I get to go to the fucking East Ham Crab Shack once a year, fish the Cape Cod Canal, and go the fuck home. Yeah, I got a freaking... You paying for vacations, like, legit, I wish I could do that yeah. vacation. Yeah, oh, yeah. And they go to New York a lot, too. And they try to act like it's like some cheap trip. But they go to freaking Broadway shows with the kids, like Lion King tickets. Those are freaking expensive, man. All right? Uh, like all this shit. And it's the fact that while she's doing so and while she's sharing these pictures on Facebook, she also has the nerve, like days later and days before, to be like, yo, I'm dying. I need money. And she claims she has West Coast doctors and East Coast doctors because she had pictures in California at Disneyland and she needed to explain those. So she's like, oh, we were only at Disneyland because I was visiting my West Coast doctors and they were like uh, very oh, negative fun. compared to my East Coast doctors. I mean, she literally made up East Coast and West Coast doctors. That's insane. Not to man, not to, well, before we go too much into this, what do you guys think of the story, Brett and Maddie? Curious what you have to say. So now, <laughs> so listen, you're a super slut, number one. Number two, you're using children to further your your um, lifestyle, yes. right? Yes, yes. We can all agree on that? Yes, of course. She's using kids to do that. We agree. What's worse? Like, I, I could say, um, I'm using turtle riders to get my name out. <laughs> And then people be like, dude, it's only Facebook. Who gives a fuck? But you're putting up GoFundMes. You're getting money from your little fucking gay dance page. And yeah. you get to go to California, Florida. When's the last time you've been to California, Uncle Turtle? Uh, I have not been in California in probably 15 years. So... So now, uh, back in the day, I used to go to a Raiders game, a home game, every year. Yeah. That's probably in the early 2000s, when I could afford it. Yeah. I can't now. With the Pennsylvania lotteries. It's <laughs> like, I have a disease. Oh, my God. Contribute to my GoFundMe. Here I am in Miami's Rotello restaurant, which an appetizer costs 30 you there, Brett? We lose you? So until Brett comes back, right? Here's like some images, right, from her Christmas. And this one really pissed us off. So this is how hard she tried to sell it. She tried to say, my friend Regold Gold says, uh, my first day taking my treatment plan, going from never taking one pill to taking 10 with supplement drops, and this is just the start. And so she shows like a picture of this, and she's acting like this is like my last Christmas and shit. And she, let's look at some of these pills. We had some uh, people that are very familiar with pharmaceuticals. Look at these pills. They're all over the counter, like fucking vitamins and shit, like dietary shit, all right? Not one of these pills is a prescribed thing. They would all have some sort of like indignation on there, uh, something on there that would designate that it's a pharmaceutical pill, right? This is just over, over the counter bullshit. And she's like actually going on there and thinking that people are so stupid that they will believe this shit. Okay, that they will believe this. So uh, that was just wild. Um, what else did she do? She did some other crazy shit. Can she, you hear me? I can hear you now. Go ahead. All right, all right. So now, like you said, the, the list of pills thing. It's like, dude, those are all supplements. They don't have any stamps, like you said, but they're not... Uh, Hey, I'll kill myself. 
you can't kill yourself by taking four pills of fish oil, three antibiotics, and two headache remedies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's true. It's true. Well, she didn't say she was going to kill herself with those pills. Well, no, I'm just saying. Uh, all right, go ahead. Did I miss that? Sorry, I apologize. So, anyway, the Beverly Patch wrote about her, right? And the Beverly Patch writes about her, and she comes on there because they're talking about Turtle Boy. And this is what she writes. This company, as us, is a fraud. I can prove that everything this company is stating about me is a lie and have attorneys working on this case. So she has a team of attorneys, but she needs a GoFundMe for her brain disease, which, by the way, we looked into as well. You would be able to function pretty much fine, but you wouldn't be able to, like, dance, uh, which she does at shows, even though she has no business dancing. She lies about uh, several organizations that she, she said she danced with freaking Cisco. Cisco, right? Uh, she said she danced with Dancing with the Stars, that she would dance with Alvin Ailey and all this shit. She didn't do any of it. It was all a fucking lie. She made it all up. Uh, and we know this because... Uh, first of all, you would have those pictures all over your dance studio, right? If you were like, yo, I fucking played catch with Tom Brady, right? You'd have a fucking picture of you with Tom Brady, yeah. wouldn't you? Like, that you know, would be your cover picture. Exactly, exactly. Like, it's not that hard. <laughs> yeah, but she's like, yo, uh, I don't have anyone. And so she keeps promising that she's like, yo, these are false. They will be proven as lies. Well, guess what? It's been a week. We haven't heard fucking a single like shred of proof. And here's the thing. Not once, not once have we heard from anyone defending her. We write about some of the most god awful people on the planet, right? And nevertheless, there's always a slew of people lining up to free my boy to be like, yo, this shit's whack, right? Not her though. She doesn't have one fucking parent, one happy client. One former employee or current employee who's like, no, this business is legit. Not fucking one. She shut down her fucking bio on the web page. She shut down her Facebook page. She shut down the company's Facebook page. Right? And oh, the thing, the other thing she got caught with too, the scholarships. This is my favorite part. Do you guys see this, Brett? And Maddie? Yeah, no. I, like, like I, I, I want to get into the um, the donated clothes thing. Oh, we'll go through the scholarship. All right, so the scholarship, scholarship shit. Thing this is what a scam this is, because scholarship sounds good. So she goes that uh, she gives out two hundred thousand dollars worth of scholarships over the years. Two hundred thousand—that's a lot of scholarships, right? And so we start looking into it. We ask her, like, can you give us one person who received a scholarship? And she's like, no, they're for poor kids, and I can't give them out for privacy concerns. It's like, first of all. Every organization that gives out scholarships, they always have like a freaking award for it. You know what I mean? Pictures. That's just how fucking scholarships work, right? Of course, but she can't, she gives us one person and the person she gives us, we contact him and he doesn't like her. He fucking rats on her. He's just like, yeah, she's fucking fucked up. It wasn't even a scholarship, he goes. It was a fucking coupon, right? So like basically what, he, what, what she does is she says, all right, so you're giving me two thousand dollars a year, right, for dancing? Let's make it eighteen hundred. I'll give you ten percent off. That's a scholarship, bitch. That's not a scholarship. That's a fucking coupon. That's like a scholarship. Uh, yeah. Like you're spending it at her business, right? Like if you, if I get a college scholarship from the Lions Club, right? The Lions Club doesn't make me spend that check at the bar and buy beers at the Lions Club. Right? You don't have to go spend it back at the fucking people you got it from, which is what she's doing. You spend the money with Revive Dance Exchange. Therefore, it's not a scholarship. It's a fucking coupon. That's all it is. Right? And it gets you to spend more money with her, essentially. If it was a scholarship, you'd be able to take that money and spend it at another dance studio. You know what I mean? So it's not a fucking scholarship. So anyway, Brett. I think we should talk about the... The donated clothes. Yeah, what do you think of that? The donated clothes. Well, well, so her view was uh, she asked her little sheep uh, if you have any dance shoes or costumes, this and that, to donate. We would love to give those to less fortunate kids. Always less fortunate. Now, from what I understand from following this blog and looking at all the things that the parents have said, 
These are expensive as fuck. Yes, quite. Like these dance shoes, these costumes that you have to over-sexualize kids in, like all this shit that is really expensive. So all of these people donated these clothes and shoes, and she sold them. Yeah, she she sold them online. On, on eBay for profit. Yes, that's exactly what she did. I read from. Uh, I want you to donate. Oh, we're losing you, Brett. We're losing you. We're losing you, Brett. So we got to come back to you. So here's the thing. Uh, here's some more shit she did. She has a handicap placard. She ain't fucking handicapped. That's another fucked up shit she does. Her credentials, none of them end up making any sense whatsoever. And we check them all out. And none, like several of the programs, she says, don't even offer the programs. She's doing massage therapy without a license. That's illegal. She's doing raffles without a license. All this money from the overpriced recitals she claims is going to the scholarship fund, which doesn't fucking exist. Okay. Uh, and all this shit. And so what I would ask for turtle riders right now in the comments, I'd like to hear from you of all the shit this woman has done. What do you think is the most fucked up? Right. And what I think is the most fucked up came in part six, right? It was when the mother, uh, the daughter of a, of a parent, right? Who pulled out of RDX. She messages the child at 2.30 a.m. and tells the child, you can't be friends with my daughter anymore. All right, that's like the most fucked up. And then the threatening of the suicide, right? And the bad-mouthing clients in front of other clients, like it was all so fucked up. So Brett, Brett and uh, Maddie and people in the comments, what do you guys think was the most fucked up sh shit she did? You there, Brett? You there? Maddie is sleeping. You're fucking kidding. Maddie's sleeping? By the way, Maddie, this is his last time on the show. I'm very disappointed in Maddie tonight. I gave him one question to answer tonight. A fucking layup. And he blew it. Two times. He's not welcome back on the show. He's fired. All right. So, um, let's talk about... Let's see what people are saying here. We're buffering? Is that what people are saying? We're buffering like a motherfucker? Breathe. All right. Live video interrupted. Can you still see it, Brett? Motherfucker. Yeah, uh, we have 159, right. I guess. Yeah, all of them. Is that a choice? Texting the girl at 2.30. I think that was the most fucked up part. Faking the brain disease, people are saying. That's the most fucked up part. Um, her father paid for the trips. Yeah, that's the fuck. Let's see. You text child at 2.30 a.m. Yeah, to tell her that you can't hang out with my daughter. You can't be friends with her. That's honestly what she Dude, said. Come on, man. Yeah. That's like... That's sociopathic. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Like this, this is the actual text she sent. The mother gave this to us. Hi, this is June 30th, 2.32 a.m. This is Miss Candy. I'm not upset with you at all. I loved teaching you, and it's very sad how things turned out. Sorry, but from this point on, I cannot have you have contact with you, my daughter, uh, for I do not want to upset your family. Keep, like She tells a fucking kid, you can't be friends with my fucking kid at 2.30 in the fucking morning. That's insane. This woman's insane. And when we first messaged her about this, this is like the shit she was telling us. Like, she didn't know that we knew all this shit. And so she's being like, hey, what's Turtle Boy Sports? Uh, bitch, you're about to find out. All right. We do scholarships, blah, blah, blah. Like trying to treat us like we're the stupid ones, you know? We don't give out the names, blah, blah, blah. She starts blaming it on the parents, these lying parents, and all this shit. Was, and that's when we knew, right? That's when we knew, oh, we got a story here, right? We got a story. This woman is up to fucking something. I don't know if she should be in jail, but she owes a lot of people a lot of money, in my opinion. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if it's criminal what she did, but she should never, ever be in business again. So let's see what people are saying in the comments. Let me know if you're still there, Brett, too. You can say whatever you want. 
Yeah, I'm in. Okay, cool. Um, what do you think of her husband taking the last name? I thought that was pretty funny, too. See, now you call it funny. I call it sad. Yes. It's such a... I mean, like, I, it's... Now, I'm, I'm not... Like, I know what I get called and all that. A massage therapist or whatever that word is and Masa- all that. Misogynist, but yes. But when you get married, your wife takes your name. Yeah. She is happy and so in love that she takes your last name. Yes. And you raise children or you do whatever it is the fuck you do. Yes. If the guy is forced and you can say what you want, but at the coffee table that day, there was a discussion. It's like, well, hey, our, our, our wedding's next week. What else do we need? And she goes, well, what I'm going to need is for you to take my last name. Yeah. Now, if there's any other guys out there in Turtle Land that think that that's an acceptable fucking decision, let me know. Yeah. I'm not saying this as... I'm Billy Big Dick, the guy, you take my last name, woman. I'm not saying that. I'm saying in the tradition of fucking marriage, you take my last name. No? No, I mean, yeah, it's like, well, here's the thing, Brett. I don't have a problem with women keeping their maiden name. I mean, that, I mean, I just no. think there's reasons no. that women if do it. If you want to be, say, um, Sarah Thorot Killerin, like, that's fine. Like, keep your last name. Like, I get it. But I ain't going to be Brett Thoreau. That's the thing. That's, you know, like, you know that's like, you might that's as well. fucking happening. You might as well not chop. a little. You might as well chop your dick off right there. Like, you're just basically, I mean, yeah. how do you ever face your buddies again? You know, how do you well, ever honestly, go out with the guys? Just to procreate the society. Just to fucking give lineage its fucking chance. Yes. I'm sorry, lady. And I'm not. Fucking, I don't even give a fuck at this point. Fuck Nabla. I'm not Maddie good. sleeping next to me. <laughs> fucking, yeah. fucking, I don't give a fuck. You married me. You yeah. take my last fucking name. Yeah. And our children will further our lineage. Yeah. Our, not my, our. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to be Brett Thoreau. No. I don't want to be that. No, exactly. Because my kid will be Brett Thoreau Jr.? Yeah. No. Not he'll happening. Be Brett fucking Kaloran Jr. and he'll be a fucking savage. <laughs> and that's how the fuck it is. <laughs> fuck it. Does that not make sense? No. Am I an asshole for that? No, it, it is. It is. It's just like. I can understand women taking, keeping their maiden name. If you're a doctor, if you're published, there are reasons that women do it. I don't like the hyphenated name. People are saying hyphenated. To me, that's even worse. Like, don't subject your kid to a hyphenated last name. That I mean, what if he marries someone with a hyphenated last name? You're going to have fucking four fucking last names? Like, stop it with a hyphenated name. So, next thing you know, it's Brett, Thoreau, Kaloran, uh, Bird, yeah. Margolis. Margolis. <laughs> Oh, he had a, a beta cut kid. He is doomed. Yeah, he's fucked. <laughs> All right. So anyway, uh, I don't know if any people have any last thoughts on that. I thought she's just like one of. I'm, I'm really enjoying these blog series, by the way, just ripping these people apart. These Greg Bates of the world, these Candy Dennis's of the world. They need to be exposed, and this is why you people come to Turtle Boy. Is because we do shit like this, and nobody else does it. You can't find this shit anywhere. Right. And so because this is like the kind of public interest story people are interested in, like people don't want to turn on the news and and see another story about like fucking Trump. It's honest. Yes. People don't want to go on the news. We say what we think. You don't have to fucking agree. No one agrees with me. Yeah. You don't have to agree, but at least we fucking show you what the fuck is going on. You got that right. That's the to me the most mm-hmm. is everyone's like oh hey this and blah, blah, blah. shut the fuck up look around your community and tell me we're wrong yeah if you look around whatever town you live in and i don't give a fuck what city it is anywhere in america if you can look around and tell me that we are wrong then go suck a fat baby's nuts fuck you you do not live yeah. in reality yeah 
And here's the thing. It's like this, these stories to me are more valuable to the community than another story about like fucking Trump in, in Russia or some bullshit like that that really doesn't affect us and I don't give a fuck about it and nobody really gives a fuck about it at the end of the day. Like these are the kind of things that unite all people of all political affiliations. It's like we all agree a woman faking a brain disease so she can go to freaking Disney World and fuck over and message kids. Like, like no liberal, conservative, we all agree that's fucking awful. And that's why we need Turtle Boy because we give society non-divisive news. We only do shit that's like, yo, this is evil and this is good. And that's it. That's it. We don't do like uh, partisan shit. We just do good and evil, and we're always on the side of good, always. So that's that. We're uh, always trying to stay out of politics. Exactly. Right? Yeah, we don't do that, and that's why. That's why I don't. Uh, that's why we do don't. That's we why, do. Go ahead. We don't do the left versus right. No. We don't do any of that. Yeah. Trump, that Elizabeth Wall. Uh, we don't do any of that. Yeah, we don't do it. Because you know why, Brett? Because then that, that's how you turn into Breitbart. Like, that's how you turn into, like, something, no, no, some, that's, something that's, that's, that you're not. It's just not who we are. you know, we're talking about the flat. It's like, mm -hmm. I have no interest in that. None. All right, so why don't we get to the last segment here? Ask Turtle Boy. Anything you guys want to ask, uh, Brett or Uncle Turtle Boy. You can't ask Matty Moe because he's a bitch and he's sleeping. Uh, let us know in the uh, comments. Nice. You can have my balls in exchange for your last name. Exactly. Real news turtle. Yeah, we love you people. <laughs> yeah. Pam is at a concert. Excellent. I'll say uh, we're at 154 viewers, and every one of you is the fucking man. Yeah, don't forget, by the way. Fun. Garage. You motherfuckers the, yeah. rule. And thank you so much for being here. Oh. And I'm not a bullshit. I don't even, I don't like half of you. <laughs> but I respect the fact that you're fucking here. Yeah. Let's see. Any questions? Any questions uh, you got people want to ask? Are you going to do any follow-up on Masturbates? Only if there's new shit, quite frankly. If like there's a major development, then we will. I mean, but it's the same old shit with Greg Bates. I mean, we've blown him up. He's fucked. Uh, he he will never be the same again. His name will all when you Google Greg Bates, that shit will come up. He's an Urban Dictionary now, so he's fucked. Do you people, see the people are always bringing up every week the book, man? Yeah, you gotta get that. Yeah, book. it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, the podcasts have been. Well, somebody said, "Where have the podcasts been, Brett?" We had a couple of podcasts scheduled this week. No, no comments. Oh no, man! No, one hundred percent. That was my fault. Yeah, Brett was supposed to come on a podcast this week. <laughs> All right, I'll explain it. I've been going through some shit. Uh, uh, people somehow got one of my profiles. Um, if you're friends with Brett with two T's, Brett, uh, unfriend and block that motherfucker because it got hacked. And I have people calling my phone constantly and shit. Uh, the Beluga Beefcake called me. Uh, the son of other junk fuck and blah, blah, blah. But, um, Oh, fuck's sake. People keep saying Chiampi. You guys make. Yeah. Huh? People keep saying Chiampi, Chiampi. Let's call him one more time. Fuck him. Uh, yeah, well, no, he, he's baller, son. He's a cunt. Pussy. He's that freshly saved, warm, oh. gaping vagina he, that we all hope for. Brett, he blocked me. He blocked Clarence. You can't even message him now. <laughs> what a fucking pussy. <laughs> What a fucking pussy. Unbelievable. What about the other website with serious stuff? Yeah, that's a... Uh, we, we just never got around to that, but it's definitely in the plans. Definitely in the plans. Hey, there was a, a question from my future wife, Sarah Thoreau. What'd she say? It said, will you ever do bone rides with Brett to dispensaries? Ooh, that might be a good one so when that comes out. Yeah. Dispensary yeah. And just smoke our faces off and have someone drive for us. Yeah. That's a good one. I actually like that one when it comes out. Somebody asked about the Rhode Island uh, EBT bust. Yeah, we're going to have more on that in the future, I'm sure. We definitely, we're definitely we going to go through all their Facebooks first and see what we can find out on all of them. So keep the questions coming because they kind of go fast here. So uh, if they come up, we'll answer yeah, them as we can go along. My buddy Kelly Moran said, 
I'll take you to a restaurant, order, eat, and skip out. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Well, that's in reference to that vlog. Remember the guy that left the tab? Oh, somebody says call Wanda up. Yeah, what was that chick Wanda? Can you ask Amanda if she will practice making babies with me? Amanda, Mike wants to make babies with you, so maybe practice. Um, let's see, what's that chick Wanda's name? Uh, Wanda, we wrote about her today. Wanda No Beam. Let's call her up. Wait, I can look on my phone. Hold on. I know some people we should call. Who? I got a few calls recently. Uh, hold on. One was from... I gotta scroll down. Hold on. Keep the conversation going, nigga. <laughs> Uh, so she's not answering. We tried oh, one. Six. All right, listen. Dial this number. I can't dial a number. I can't dial oh. a number. Oh. All right. Why is it called Turtle Boy Sports? It's named after the Turtle Boy statue in downtown Worcester. Ooh, Turtle Boy Tinder could be. Turtlesonly.com would be a good one. What else are people asking? Amateur? Pat saying, not sure why. Uh, Wanda's hard. Yeah, this is our second Wanda. Uh, anytime, Mike. Oh, there she is. Uh, all right. Any... Um, other questions. I saw a couple good questions that kind of went by quickly. I can answer them as best as we can if you want to get them out now. Let's see what people say. Yeah, how uh, many people, uh, uh, somebody asked the people, how many people go to the blog every day? That's a good question. Uh, back when Facebook, our, our Facebook page went down, we were down to like, in like we were getting like, you know, 90,000 people a day. And then when our Facebook page went down in December, we had 43,000 people a day. It was like fucking it was depressing, man, like fucking rock bottom. But then this month, we're averaging over 100,000 people a day. It is the biggest month in Turtle Boy history, okay? We're going to have over 3 million people on the website this month. Over 3 million. It's the biggest fucking month in Turtle Boy history. They can't stop us, people. We figured out a way around our Facebook problems. And that way is Clarence Woods Emerson. That's it. Right and downloading the app, right? And people just going to the website every day, like and people signing up for the email blasts. Like there's a million fucking ways to get around this shit, and everybody comes to Clarence now. It's fucking awesome, man. Like you can. I always see. I always see people bitching about ads and this and that, and I always post a screenshot of the app. Yeah, they don't have. The I problem. don't know why all of you don't have the fucking app. It takes two seconds to I download. I literally. Nothing pops up. I fucking scroll through the story. Yeah. I read all the turtle goodness, and I go the fuck home. Yeah. I go comment on the Facebook page or whatever the fuck. But get the app. Android uh, is is it on the iPhone? Yeah, it's on thing? iPhone. It's on Android. It's on everything. It's on Google Play. Yeah. Yeah. So just search. Oh, but you got to separate the words turtle space. Boy Space Sports. Yes. And the app comes up with that sexy ass turtle. Oh, yes, and he's you sexy. Download and you're good. Yes, oh, yeah. He got that right. All right. Any, somebody asked me, like, have you seen the guy throwing the dog off the bridge and wear him? No, but I'm probably going to have to go look at that soon after this. Someone will definitely have it. Um, Send it to us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So, yeah, put the link on every blog. We do put the link on every blog. There's a big friggin' thing on the side of it. Like, check this out. Like, right on the right-hand side of the blog. Of course, it's fucking freezing. <laughs> right on the side of the blog is a link to the app store. You go and you click. Eventually, this fucking computer's gonna load. We'll come right back to that. Yeah, it takes two seconds. The turtle is kind of cute. Yeah, he's very mischievous looking like he's happy but he's kind of got something up his sleeve all right that's the way it looks uh when you, when you look at the turtle boy what about the turtle killer yeah thank you for reminding me we got to go get him twitch have you thought about twitch i don't know enough about it we got to look into it clarence you need to shave your what? arms never i love my hairy arms fuck you uh might as well freaking take my fucking wife's last name if i'm gonna shave my arms give me a break all right, uh, well, see here, here it is on the right-hand side. You guys can just click on the app. See this? App. There's even this thing that says, click here 
to download the Turtle Boy app. And boom. Uh, uh, it, Ken McKay Jr. asked where he could get Turtle Boy stickers. Those are coming soon. We're going to, I swear to God, we're going to re-up the Turtle Boy store. I swear to God, we're going to re-up it. And by the way, I'm not at home tonight. That's why the Wi-Fi sucks. I'm out in some remote location in the middle of fucking nowhere. That's why I'm doing this. So, oh, good. Thank you for Chiampi's phone number. All right. Um, all right, cool. I guess that's it. Uh, if there's any last minute questions, let us know. We'll call it a night here. Anything? We still have, uh, we went from 270 something to 134. But that's fine. You hide for fucks. Yeah. Are the motherfuckers I talk shit for. Yep. No, I'm not even fucking kidding, man. All this dumb shit I say, and let's be honest, it's all dumb shit. Is so one of you can maybe at lunch, you 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 log into Facebook, you hit Turtle Boy, and you see me say some outlandish shit, and you smile. That made your lunch break better. That that that's all this is for, man. Yeah. For me, for Turtle Boy, it's it's the only news source you have that's un fucking bias and we'll always be. we don't go for a political party we don't go for a thing there's scumbag fucks fucking the rest of us yeah and they print it yeah how is that not <laughs> you know what i it's mean it's a public service like, baby. how do you protect that yep all right folks we're gonna call it a night love having you people on another fantastic show huge audience we will see you all Back in business uh, on okay. Monday. What's up, Nancy? Peace, Turtle Riders. Bye-bye.